So I can view game night in two ways. And one is to view it as an episode on its own. One is to view it as an episode that ends the first season of Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse after two pretty fantastic episodes. The episodes before this, um, Disappearing Act and Once Upon an Apple, were fabulous. They were both filled with references to other Disney films and Disney characters. So I was expecting great things for Game Night, but there weren't really any references to Disney films. Maybe a scene from The Lion King, a couple of other things here and there that you could kind of maybe view as being Disney references. So I was a little bit disappointed by that because I was expecting it to really stand up to the previous two episodes. But but on its own, and the message it has, I think worked really well. The gang are going over to Mickey's house for game night. They're fed up of playing the same games over and over again and Mickey always winning. But little do they know, Mickey's actually arranged for them to play a real-life board game where they are the pieces of the board game and they make their way along it. They get different um, prizes for progressing. And we have this montage of them doing all of the different levels, doing life-size Jenga, life-size real-life Tetris, um, all of these different games that you will actually recognise. And I think that's really fun, really engaging, trying to work out um, what games are next or what it's meant to resemble. Some of them, for me, are very obvious, like Tetris. Some of them I don't recognise as being real games, but other people might. And then they stop having fun at a certain point because it actually becomes really serious. And they play things like Hole in the Wall and Total Wipeout. Um, is that the name of the show I'm thinking of? I think so. Maybe. Possibly. But they start playing these like reality TV show style games. And then something happens that's a test of friendship and a test of loyalties. And Donald in particular has an interesting role in this. And what Donald does, I will say, was wonderful. And the sequence and the actual Disney clip... Sure, it wasn't enough to make up for the absence of Disney references, but having that in there was beautiful. It was edited in very well. I don't think it took me out of the animation. In fact, I don't even think I realised it had stopped being animation. It was one of those things where you're just so invested in it, you don't notice the shift. Kind of like when you're watching a live-action animation crossover, you become used to it very quickly. You don't necessarily realise that you're no longer watching one or the other. And I thought it was beautiful. And the ending, the final frame, I just thought, that's fabulous. That's fantastic. And I won't say what it is, but I really enjoyed it. So on its own, it's a pretty decent episode and really good. As a final episode, it's pretty great. But as a final episode weighed up against the two that came before it, I feel like it's a bit of a weaker link. It's just not as Disney. It's not as soaked in Disney references and everything. And that's, you know, that's fine. That's, that's, nobody promised it would be. It's not like it set out to do that and failed to do that. It's just that's one of the things I love about Wonderful World is the references to other Disney characters and films, and it was lacking. But in itself, very well animated, very detailed, a lot of fun, brilliant character development for some of them. Very engaging, unpredictable, brightly coloured. Generally, I can't really fault it. Kind of sad that I finished with Wonderful World.